Welcome to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast where you hear inspirational stories, encouraging news, and in depth interviews with authors, influencers, CEOs, and thought leaders. Passioneer Magazine, the podcast. Bold ideas, brave pursuits, boundless inspiration. Hello, Reverend. Victor Allen, thank you so much for coming on and spending some time with me here on Passion Year Magazine. I'm so glad to have you here. Awesome. I'm so glad to be here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for that. Now, I realize that there may be some listeners that aren't as familiar with your name as others. So my first question for you is, tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you you? Well, I guess just the perseverance to keep going through situations and know that, you know, we're living life from uh, the victory standpoint as a Christian life. So uh, <clears throat> I would say that's that's pretty much me. I, I, I go through a lot. So that, that's pretty much me, the victory. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I can I can definitely understand that someone made uh, a a mention of that with me just the other day it's so interesting that you say that because we were like hey you know dr angela you're you're all over the media you know radio tv magazine podcast you you're doing it like you're the messenger and i went oh wow i didn't i didn't think of it i didn't think of it like that so it's really interesting how our parents have given us these names and we end up um in a way becoming exactly what they called us, named us to be. So I I love it. I love it. Speaking of being a little one, when you were a kid in mind's eye, what did you imagine you were going to be when you grew up? Well, ultimately, you know, a young kid growing up in the 70s, I wanted to be a professional athlete. You know, I didn't know what sport. I liked all, pretty much all sports, but a professional athlete. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I have to tell you, because I'm an 80 kid, um, you're right. Football is a very big deal. So for those that need a visual, football was still kind of the big shoulder pads. And it was, you know, it's not football unless someone's bleeding. So you're, you're right. We had a lot of stars that were doing some amazing things. But not that they aren't now, but it was it was really a big deal. I I can definitely understand that. Now, what made you decide to go into the fields that you're in now? You're a businessman, you're in ministry, and you're an author. What made you decide that you wanted to wear one of those three hats? Well, as a youth, I had a vision that stuck with me many years it was a it was a vision of this man that was out on the bow of the ship it stuck with me so much that during the elementary years i always drew it out in a in a picture and entered it into the community fair like every year i drew that picture out wow that you know it's it's really inspiring to know that even as a little kid you knew that you would be out and about and world right you would be going places and doing things that is that is so interesting and here you are in ministry being a fisher of men uh and not of fish so i think that is i think that is absolutely awesome now when it comes to we usually ask like what is the point of of your business but i want to ask it a little a little bit more gently and that is what do you wish to achieve by having the businesses and working in the areas in which you do well the number one thing i want to do is to educate and also inspire people but i want to do it in that order educate then through the education, inspire people to structure their business filings correctly. And then I mentor them. I mentor basically kingdom minded business people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, was there a particular time that you can recall where you felt a nudge or a knowing that now is the time that I need to make this 
happen. So many people um, say that it's almost like they woke up one day and said, yep, I have to do this paperwork or I have to purchase this thing or do this thing to get the ball rolling. Did you have such an experience? Well, what, what, what I can equate to that is that once I got to a certain point after having so much adversity to get established and set up and structure my personal business correctly and all the you know it took me a while for you know to figure it all out and you know get educated myself and i i just had this thought all of a sudden a minute is wait a minute you know i think this right here what you know what i've been through I need to, you know, put this out there to help a lot of people to get through because a lot of times they're blaming their downfall on something that's not really what, that's not really why the downfall is there. Why didn't this thing go through? That's not really why it's there. And educating people on the filings is major. So I, I just wanted to share people with that in that sense. Absolutely. And, and I know that uh, people are, always is in need of that right um that is one of the scariest things <laughs> that people say i don't want to mess up i don't want to be in trouble with my state or with some federal agency or whatever i just want to make sure that i get it all right so there is a lot of apprehension there so i i definitely know that you are helping those who need that assistance and and that's really key about what uh, one of the things that everyone that I speak to wishes to do and like you said you want to help people you want to educate first and assist them how how you and I, I love that now what advice would the person that you are today give to the person you were when you first started out this one's pretty straight and forward get our EIE, EIN number to establish your business funding instead of trying to go through your personal social security number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to pick your brain a little bit more on that because I know that perked up some ears perhaps. Why is it important to get an EIN as opposed to using your social security number? Well, the, the major difference is, you know, business uh, lines of credit are, 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 are started out at a way higher limit than personal lines of credit. That's mm -hmm. just, 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 just the nature of banking 101. Um, so you, you have a greater advantage to do more volume, volume or, or, and also it also gives you more flexibility or a cushion of, uh, you know, uh, uh operating, um, budget. Um, and, mm -hmm. and it also, it, 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 so, but without your filing set up correctly, again, then you can't, I mean, you can't, you can't apply for it. So the, 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 the number one thing is, you know, the structure, but the difference in the two is, you know, a quite a bit in funding initially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think that once someone understands that difference, they're going to be so happy that they, they followed on that one piece of free advice that you've given here. And that is make sure you have your EIN number. I couldn't agree with you more there. Well, as a organization and association, a business, even sometimes a ministry gets yeah. longer. They, they start to grow. Uh, many times the, the passion, that fire, that was once there, you know, when you were a rookie, a newbie, when you were first starting out, you were full of zest and, and passion for what you were doing. And that can wane just a little or dampen a little bit. How do you keep that? Or what is your suggestion to those that are first starting out? How do you keep the passion alive? How do you keep the fire going for your business? Yeah, well, this is my thing. I'm a minister in a five-fold ministry. I work as an evangelist. Now, to keep me humble, I I, const, I keep actively working in on an evangelism team of winning souls for the kingdom. Now, mm -hmm. 
through that process, the fire, the prayer life, the meeting the needs of the people, the joining faith with people, the breakthroughs, the, you know, the answered prayer testimonies coming back. That's what keeps, you know, the fire going for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It sounds like it's making sure that you are active, that you are present, that you are in the moment and that you don't kind of just rest on what you did before you make sure that it's always active it's ever it's ever present and moving i i like that answer now when it comes to the things that we do in our lives we understand that some things are going to put us in a positive mood and there are some things that are going to uh, put us in a negative mood or make us less positive than than we could be we understand that it is best to operate from that positivity, from a, a, a sense of being the best that we can be. With that being said, what three things do you find that you do in your daily life that contribute to you being on that positive side of love, of you having a better sense and understanding of gratitude and thankfulness? Okay, I'm a, I'm a, I have three answers for that. And the second mm -hmm. one is going to seem like it's a little off track, but it's major. I found that over the last few years. The first thing is I read a daily devotion. I'm reading one by uh, Sarah Young now called The Jesus Calling. It's, it's, it's every mm -hmm. day for, for one year and every day it, it has a word. So I, I, I don't skip a day. I don't go ahead. I just start off with reading that now my, mm -hmm. my second answer is i eat healthy to preserve my body mm -hmm. so i've spent some time over the last couple of years to identify what is eat, eating healthy what things i have to put in my body that's healthy what's good i have you know organic greens i have you know educated myself on that aspect as far as multivitamins i take every day vitamin c I have to do that. Now that's, 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 I would say that's my strongest answer. But the third one is then I pray to stay humble, to, to, to be humble through the trials of life. Yeah. That, that's mm -hmm. what I asked for in, the, in that prayer. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really like those, those three things that you're, that you're doing. You're starting your day off with something positive, something grounding, something really helps you um with who you are i i think as, as kingdom builders of people of faith um that is who we are and then all other things are added into that so um you are you are definitely giving uh i can i can feel someone saying hmm okay a devotional that's that might be what i'm missing and it really does have a a very great way of helping us start our day i love it, I love it. now i want to ask you about uh being an author uh, so many times we we understand that people have written books but we don't we don't give them enough time to to tell us about the book right and i don't want someone to say she's the author but what's the name of the book <laughs> so i want to give you a moment or two to please uh tell us about what is this book you've written why did you feel it was important to share that information in book form okay the name of my book is B business credit leveraging and it is basically to educate people based on the things we've already discussed, how to structure your business and get funding and learning about credit, personal credit, business credit, and the difference in the two and the benefits of those and how to, you know, communicate with the different bureaus in order to straighten out anything you have that may be a problem. But I felt that this is only, this is only a tool a conversational tool that the Lord has used me so I, I can open the door about the kingdom. Remember, I said I, I mentor kingdom-minded business people. So when this book reached someone or, or they're, they're bridging the gap with the education they need to, 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 uh, to go and meet, you know, to their God-given destiny, 
then that's an open door or, or opportunity where I can share the gospel and and and, and how these all things all transpired in my life. And and that's why I feel that I'm sharing, you know, to the people what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is definitely help folks out there. So that is that is something to be applauded for for only listening to the directive that you were given you know doing that thing that the lord has placed on your heart but really have passion for it as well and i think that helps people to receive the message not only do they understand that you're not just like preaching at folks you know like you're not just saying hey you need to do this but you know it because of the lesson that you've learned so and that gives people a different appreciation for the information because they know that you have already walked through it yourself so thank you thank you for sharing it and of course the book is available on amazon and wherever books are sold now my last question for you reverend victor is how do you feel that you use your voice to empower others? Well, the, the, the number one thing I do is the relationships where God has built for me, I kindle those relationships and build from them. And then as I walk in the light and allow his word to be my lamp to my path, I see the success that comes. I met you uh, several years ago. Today, as we speak, my book that you just mentioned is an international bestseller in five different countries. I have traveled around. I have traveled to Germany and spent a week there and the people were warm, welcoming. And so as I continually to walk and, and, and build the relationships with the ministries that I have, then that gives me the opportunity to the voice, you know, my my uh my uh, testimony uh and then i'm reaching people that are in that situation now they when i say business they may have a problem on the business or this is also for people who've educated themselves and have exhausted their their personal social security number and they're you know at the end of no way mm -hmm. to get more funding so now it, it opens up to let them know that now you can establish yourself as a professional and open your own office in this manner where they thought they were at the end of the road but that with with that line what they was at was only the start line for the supernatural to take place and, and a transformation happens in their lives so that's why i continually to go and network with the relationships i have and continue to tell my story and this this thing goes it just keeps continually to, to increase so i'm thankful for that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you are you are so right in there. You know, when when we speak that positive, when we believe that we are doing that which God has purposed us to do, um, if we are willing to walk the path, to go on the journey, we will see that we will be taken to places that we did not expect to go. You know, in our minds, I do we expect for our books, for our works, for whatever it is that we do to to international? Of course, that's that's what we hope for. That's what we pray for. But then when we see it starting to manifest, to start to come into our reality, it's like, look at God do these awesome and amazing things. And it's like, wow, this is really starting to happen. So I, I just want to give you another a round of applause for following through and continued to move forward not only with your book international bestseller that's all awesome but also with your business and with your ministry you are really inspiring others and that's something that absolutely positively uh, look forward to sharing here on passionier magazine now before i let you go can you remind everyone, because there may be somebody out there, Reverend Victor, that, that wants to connect with you on, on a school, what is the best way to do that? My email at victorallen65 at yahoo.com. Um, I respond and read all emails. I'll get back to you. Or if you're ever in, in Texas, in Beaumont, Texas specifically, join, you know, come worship with us at any time at 9950 Walden Road. Victory Victory Church is the ministry. I thank you. Uh, 
love it. I love it. Well, Reverend Mr. Allen, thank you so much for spending time with us here on Passionary Magazine. And as our motto reminds us, we have bold ideas, brave pursuits, and boundless inspiration. Thank you so much for being a part of that today with us. Thank you for listening to Passioneer Magazine, the podcast.